In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use Celery in a Flask app. And to demonstrate it, I'm going to show you how to build this simple app where you can use the OpenAI API to generate images. So the idea is I can put in a prompt to generate an image and the image is gonna be generated in the background. So for example, if I put for a prompt a city with many tall buildings and generate, this is gonna generate in the background. So I can still use the app, it's not blocking me from doing anything. And once the image generation is done, then the app will be able to pick it up and display the image. So as you can see, I only have the three original images, but once I have the new image ready, I'll see it. So we see this image here of the city with a bunch of buildings, and that's because it took maybe 10, 15 seconds to generate this. And now that it's ready, we can see it in the app. So you'll be able to do things like this in your own Flask apps with Celery. And even though this example is pretty simple, it actually covers a lot of things that you have to do with Celery. So I'll show you how to set everything up and how to create this app. So let's get into creating this example. Okay, so to begin, let me show you what I have. I have the basics of a Flask app set up. So I have a Dunder init in here with SQL Alchemy set up. I have an extensions.py with SQL Alchemy already set up there. I have a model for images. So all my saved images will be here. Their URLs and their prompts will be in the database through this model called images. And then I have a route that renders a single template, this. So the template is already done. It's expecting a list of images and it will show it in a carousel, but I don't have any images yet. So once I get the images, we'll see the carousel pop up. So the first thing I need to do is I need to prepare to use Celery. So first I need to set up my broker. So I'm gonna use Redis as my broker and I'm using Docker Compose to make it easy to set up. Okay, so I'll start up Docker Compose. So Docker Compose up dash D and it's starting in the background. So that should be fine. All right. So now let me install everything I need. So I already have Flask installed. I need to install Celery and I need to install Redis. And because I'll be working with the OpenAI API, I need to install that. So pip install OpenAI. All right, so everything should be installed. Now what I wanna do is I want to make my Flask app work with Celery. So typically in Flask, you would install some kind of extension, but because the Celery integration can be so simple, instead you can go to the Flask docs. So go to the Flask docs, the website, and then look for background tasks with Celery. So let me just search for Celery here. And then we have this link called background task with Celery. And what you can do is you can copy this code. So this first block of code, you can just copy it and you can put it in its own file, but I'm gonna put it in extensions.py since I don't have much going on in here. So I'll do extensions.py. So I'll paste it in here and we see it gives me this function called celery init app. So then I wanna import that function in my main dunder init. So I'm already importing db and I wanna import celery init app. And then just under db init app, I can call celery init app and pass an app. So let me briefly show you what's going on here. So it's creating the celery app here and it's passing a special task class called flask task. And the only thing that is doing here is it's adding the app context. So I can use the app context inside of my celery task when the time comes. So I can connect to the database, I can get configuration, things like that. Uh, it's setting the configuration from something called Celery on the config object, so I'll set up that in a second. It's setting the app as default so it can discover all the tasks in the app pretty easily. And then it's just putting the Celery app on this extensions object and it's naming it Celery, so pretty simple. So let's go back to Dunder init and let's fill in the config. So app config and then Celery. And what I wanna have is I wanna have two things. I wanna have the broker URL and I wanna have the backend URL. And they're gonna be exactly the same because I'm gonna use Redis for both. So result backend is the name of the key for that. And then both of them are going to be Redis colon slash slash localhost and then 6379. And that comes from running on Docker Compose. It's exposing 6379 for Redis. So I'm just connecting to that on my localhost. So let me copy that and paste it in the result back in as well. And then finally, I need to create a make celery file. So make celery.py. And this will be outside of my app directory. So I'm gonna do from app, import create app. And then I can create the app here. And if we look at the 
example here. So the application factory, uh, this is all I'm doing here. And then we need celery app equals flask app. This. So let me change this to flask app because sometimes celery looks for the word app. So we'll just make this flask app. And then we're getting the celery object off of extensions, just like we saw in extensions.py. Notice how it's putting it on extensions here. Here in make celery, we're just taking it off and then we're leaving it as celery app. So once we have all that, we can try to start it up. So we can do celery dash A and then make celery. So the name of the file, make celery that I just created. Worker, and then let's do dash L info. So we have here this error, and that's because in extensions.py, one thing that they did is they're using a type hint for Celery Init app. So you have two options. You can remove the type hint, or you can import Flask like this, and then it will work. So now if I do it, we see that Celery turns on. I don't have any tasks to find because I'll do that in a second but we see that the transport and results are both localhost 6379. So now let's work on creating a task. So in my app, I'm going to create a file called tasks.py. And in here, the first thing I need to do is I need to import something called shared task from Celery. So from Celery import shared underscore task. And the idea with this is it's a decorator in any function that I decorate with share task. So at share task will be registered as a celery task, meaning I can call it in the background. So in this particular example, what I want to do is I want to call a function called generate image and it's going to take in some prompt that I pass in. And for now, I'll just print out the prompt. So we'll get it working with this print first, and then we'll bring in the open AI stuff later so we can focus on the celery part for now. And now I've created the task. So now we need to use it inside of routes. So I have the route for index just returning the template. And what I want to do is I want to import that task. So from dot tasks, import generate image. And what I'm going to do here is if it's a post request, so I'll say if request dot method equals post. I'm going to call the generate image function and I'm going to pass in request.form prompt. And that's simply because inside of my template, I have a form and it has an input here called prompt. So that's what I'm going to be getting. And we see it here. It's just this input and then the generate submits the form. So let's go back here and let's go back to routes.py. So I'm going to call generate image and remember it's a celery task. So in instead of just calling generate image by itself, I need to add dot delay, and then that will send it over to Celery. And then once this runs, I just wanna to return to the same page. So return, redirect, URL for, and then main.index. I'm just going right back to the same route, but sending a get request. So let me restart Celery here to make sure that the task gets found. So if I go up here to tasks, we see app.tasks.generateImage. So the task that I created is there and it's available to be used. So now let me start my app and I'll submit the form. So flask run and let's go over and let's say a dog at a beach. So of course this won't generate an actual image for me yet because I haven't hooked up OpenAI, but I can hit generate and we see it immediately returns the page. If I go back to my console, we see that there are no errors. It's a 302, so the redirect worked on the post. And if we go to the Celery one, we see if I go down to the bottom, it ran the task for me. So we see it said it received the generate image task, and then it prints out the prompt because in my task, I'm just printing it out. And then it says it's complete. So obviously it was really fast because it's only printing something. So in our actual example, this is gonna do more work. So let's set that up right now. So what I can do inside of task is I can import the open AI stuff. So let's say from open AI, import open AI. And then inside of generate image, I'll write the code to call the image generation AI API for open AI. So I start by creating a client. Since I'm only gonna use it in this one task, I'll create the client in here. If you're using it across multiple tasks, you can create the client like outside of all the tasks. So what I'll do is I'll create a response and then I'll do client.images generate. So I'm calling generates and then I need to pass in a model. The model will be doll E3. The prompt is going to be the prompt that gets passed in. So the same prompt here. 
n equals one, I just want one image, and then the size will be um, 1024 by 1024. So once I get that response, then I can create the image in my database. So what I'll do is I'll import my image model. So from dot models import images, and I'll create a new image. So image equals images, and then it takes in a URL. So the URL is gonna be response dot data. It's gonna be the first one since I want one image dot URL. So that's where it's stored. And then I wanna store the prompt. So prompt just equals prompt. And then I'll do db.session.add image, and I need to import db. So from dot extensions import db. And then I wanna do db.session.commit to save the image in the database. So I've modified the task, so I need to restart Celery. So let me stop Celery with Control C, and then I will start it again. And no errors, so that's good. And then let me go over to the app, and I'll generate the same image this time, but this time it's gonna use the API. So a dog at the beach. Generate, it returns immediately. Let's make sure that everything is working. So it received the task, and this one is gonna be a lot slower because it's using the AI API. So this is gonna take several seconds. So we see now it sent the post request to the image generation endpoint. And then we see it succeeded in 11 seconds. So let's look at our database to see if there's anything in there. So instance here and then DB SQL I3. And now we see we have this URL, which I can copy. And then we see the prompt, a dog at a beach. So let me go in my browser and just paste that in there. And we see an image of a dog at the beach. So now let's get this to appear in our app because right now we don't see any images. So all I have to do for that is I need to go to routes.py and I wanna pass in a list of images. So it's gonna be like images equals images here. So I need to grab those images. So let me import some things from SQL Alchemy so I can query. So from SQL Alchemy, import select. And then I wanna do db.session scalars and I wanna do select images, which I'll have to import. So from dot models import images. So select images and then dot all, and then I can pass all the images. So this will get all the images that I have stored, put them in, in a variable called images, and then pass it to the template. So now if I refresh, we see DB is not defined because I forgot to import it. So from extensions import DB. And now if I refresh, we see the image of the dog. So one image, let's create another one. Um, a car at a racetrack generated. And notice that the image doesn't appear right away because it takes some time to run. It's running in the background. So this is a nice thing about Celery. It's not blocking the user from using the app. But once the image is ready, it's going to appear. So I'm just refreshing. It's still not ready. Let me refresh again. And there we go. Now we see the picture of the car at a racetrack. We see the prompt there and um, we see both images. And let's generate one more, a cool computer gaming setup. Let's do generate. Once again, I don't see that third image because it hasn't been created yet, but I can still use the app because it's running in the background. And then whenever the picture is ready, it's just going to appear in here after refreshing. So let's see, still the dog and the car. Let's see if it's here. Okay, here we go. Now we have the cool computer gaming setup. We have this weird monitor that looks like um, <laughs> it's like half a monitor on the side, kind of weird, but it looks nice other than that. So we see that everything is working in the background correctly. So with this example, we've actually covered a lot of things that you'll end up doing in your Celery task. You'll be interacting with the database, so you'll, you'll be saving something to the database or querying something from the database. Um, you may be calling an API, and you may be doing something that takes a while to run and that you don't want to block the user from using the rest of the app. So that's it for this example. So with that, if you want to learn more about how to use Celery with Flask, I have other videos on my channel that you can check out.